Hi guys, today we'll be doing something slightly different. I'll be playing a simple cover of a song, Irani Pan by Ocean Ota Young, and I'll be breaking down some of the stuff I'm doing in detail for you to add the same technique to your playing. Here's the cover. The first thing I want to talk about is the harmony in my right hand. Notice that when I play the melody, I don't just play the melody by itself. Instead, for some of the stronger notes, I add extra notes on top of the melody to give it a fuller sound. One important guideline for doing this would be to make sure that the extra note we are adding belongs to the current chord. For instance, in this short section, the current chord is a D minor chord, and the melody note that I want to add on to is an F. Notice that the additional harmony note I add is an A, which is inside the current chord D minor. Also, sometimes adding two notes instead of one note might make your playing sound better. For instance, in this short section here, my current chord is a F major, while my melody note is a B. Instead of just adding one extra harmony note, I add two harmony notes, C and F here which are both part of our current chord, F major. Another thing to note here is that you probably do not want to add harmony notes to every single note in your melody. If you do that, it will probably sound pretty cluttered and overwhelming, so I recommend adding harmony notes only to 50% of the melody notes, so that it sounds more balanced. The second thing I want to bring up would be the accompaniment pattern in the left hand. Notice that in my playing, I do not stick to one single accompaniment pattern, but instead use a mixture of a few patterns. For instance, in the introduction here, notice that I'm mainly using an arpeggio-like pattern in my left hand, where I simply go up the notes in each chord. Next, in the verse here, I'm using mainly the 1-5-1-5 pattern in my left hand, where I play the first note of the chord, followed by the 5th note, the higher 1st note, then the 5th note again. Also in the chorus here, notice that my left hand accompaniment pattern starts to become more jumpy. As this is a chorus, we want our playing to have a higher level of energy, so I use this pattern which makes my playing more energetic compared to the previous two accompaniment patterns. There's probably no formal name for this specific pattern due to the insanely large number of possible permutations, but I'm just going to call this the jumpy accompaniment pattern due to how jumpy it is, but you can call it whatever you want. To play this pattern, we start with the first note of the chord, and then the fifth note of the chord. Next, we play two notes at once, the higher third note and the higher fifth note, and finally end the pattern with a higher first note. In a nutshell, these are three of the multiple accompaniment patterns I've used in this cover, and I highly recommend that you don't just stick with one accompaniment pattern in order to add some variety and interest to your playing. Do know that accompaniment patterns in your left hand are meant to be improvised rather than planned out. 
So I won't recommend forcing yourself to play a certain pre-planned accompaniment pattern for a certain part of a song unless you're learning that specific pattern or if you're just starting out. The next thing I want to bring up would be one simple way to end your phrases. Here's how I end my phrases in this cover a majority of the time. Notice that my ending has a kind of a far away feel before actually ending on a C major chord. And this is made possible by the C suspended 4th chord and the C suspended 2nd chord. The C suspended 4th chord, or C sus4 in short, is the first chord we play here. To find its notes, we simply take a normal C major chord and replace the 3rd note with the 4th note. In this context, the 3rd note is an E, while the 4th note is an F. As such, we take out E and put in F, and there we are left with the C suspended 4th chord. The C suspended 2nd chord, also known as the C sus2 chord, is the second chord we play here. It works the same way as the C suspended 4th chord, but we replace the 3rd note with the 2nd note instead of the 4th note. Once again, the 3rd note E is replaced by the 2nd note D, and there, we are left with the C suspended 2nd chord. As such, the entire ending goes C suspended 4th, C suspended 2nd, and then a normal C major chord, which is a pretty simple but nice sounding ending that you can add to your playing. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope this video has provided value to you in some way. If it did, do give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already, as it really helped me out in the long run. I'll see you in the next video, bye!